we are starting our whirlwind trip to Disney at Animal Kingdom. Got in from Denver this morning. A room was not available for us, so we're a little hurting right now for sleep. But Animal Kingdom opened at 8 a.m. It's seven something now, uh, but they're already letting us in the park, so we'll go see if the rides are running. Maybe get some breakfast. And then the plan will be to go back to the room and rest at some point once our room is ready. I should get a text message from them when it is. And then we'll go to Anne, or actually we're Animal Kingdom now. Then we'll go to Magic Kingdom tonight. So it's a Kingdom's Day. Come and join us on our journey today. And there we have the Tree of Life. And all the animals carved in it. Built around an oil derrick. I think it's one of the more impressive icons at Disney. And I like that it's a standalone icon. Although there technically is a show inside that. First ride of the day, as it often is when we're in Animal Kingdom, is Avatar Flight of Passage. Because if you don't do it right away, the wait time will get very long. Although very long is a relative term right now because well, a couple things. Animal Kingdom is probably the least populated park and they're not filling it to capacity. So the wait times haven't been the four hours that they've been. You can park hop now where you couldn't before January 1st of 2021 during the pandemic. So I think more people are coming here in the morning and then going to other parks in the afternoon. But during the time when you couldn't park off, this place was fairly dead because people didn't want to quote unquote waste one of their days at Animal Kingdom. Because you know, there's only so much you can do here versus say Magic Kingdom or Epcot, for example. But I think it's becoming more revitalized. But this is good news for us because we can ride by the passage with a 15 minute wait which is what it is right now as we wind through this queue and i'm sure if we wanted to ride it again right afterwards we could but we might try to hunt down some breakfast before that we're hungry the first part of the avatar queue is that outdoor walkway like we saw before the end the next part is this sort of cave structure where there are cave paintings <laughs> Not sure which way to go. I think it's around here. <laughs> yes. No, nope, that says the bird in the exit. Okay. No. Ah, here we go. And then <laughs> the next part is this bunker that supposedly was put in during the time of the movies and has since been reclaimed by nature. Uh, as you can see, the nature is starting to intrude on the bunker. And then the story is that they're reusing this bunker for their conservation efforts. I like this area. They do a lot of black light work as well as just interesting plant design and it's like almost like you're in a forest here with the sound, pumped in sounds of the animals plus the trees and flowers like i was mentioning it's overall a very good queue and then we'll come to a part where it's inner research in the bunker and now we're in the inner bunker where all the research is being done. If you actually spend time in here, you'll see a big Navi, although we didn't see where we did because now we're coming up on the right entrance itself. Can everyone see me? Great. Welcome to the Avatar program. 
Soon, you're going to have a chance to undertake an amazing Navi rite of passage, flying on the back of this powerful animal called an Ikron, or as we call it, a Banshee. The way you're going to do this is by being matched to something called an Avatar. They're created by blending human DNA and Navi DNA. Once we match you to an Avatar, thanks to a special link chair, your mind will be able to control that Avatar. Using Avatars to fly this way was all figured out by my boss, Dr. Jackie Ogden. She leads her science team, which is part of the Pandora Conservation Initiative, and we're here in the Valley of Moara studying banshees and their environment. You can see the ride vehicles look like motorcycles. Pretty cool. We stopped at the little quick service window in Pango Pango. Oh, no, Pango Pango in uh, Avatar. The world, the world of Avatar Pandora. You get some breakfast because we hadn't eaten anything. We got sausage, egg, and cheese biscuits. Might be just sausage and egg biscuits. Josh got a coffee. I got a soda. Altogether, it was twenty-two dollars. Kind of expensive for you know just a couple sandwiches and a couple of drinks, but ooh, we were hungry. We're gonna dig into these and maybe get some of our uh, strength back. <laughs> just soldier on. All right, we've had some breakfast and some caffeine in us. We're doing a little better. Sun's coming out in full force, so sunglasses are needed now, of course. They're uh, fogging up <laughs> like crazy. We're on our way to the safaris. So we'll have to walk out of Pandora, the world of Avatar, over to Africa and get the safaris. I've read and seen in other blogs that doing the safaris one of the first things is the best time because it's cooler and the animals are more active as opposed to if you wait to the middle of the day when it's warmer and many of them are resting so you have a better chance to see more animals if you go in the morning that's what we're doing while we're waiting in line i can tell you a little bit about the flight of passage ride that we did earlier you get on the motorcycle like vehicle and you're supposedly riding a banshee which is one of those flying creatures and uh, the motorcycle vehicle is pretty cool because it simulates a few things like between your legs there's this bladder that expands in and out and uh, so if your beast is flying and it's breathing heavy you can kind of feel it breathing between your legs which is a pretty neat feature of uh, the ride and you know there's ups and downs the whole floor moves i always try to get some video of it by putting my phone where we put our bags i can never get anything good so if you want to see more about it i'm sure some people have some uh videos that you can find on youtube about what it looks like but it's essentially a 3d movie you put on these 3d glasses you sit on that motorized vehicle your mind gets connected to a navi and essentially it's a big motion simulator ride but it is an incredible version of a motion simulator ride we highly recommend it. Before Rise of the Resistance came out, we considered it the best ride in all of the parks here. But Rise of the Resistance is by far better than that. Not that this isn't still good, because it is, but Rise of the Resistance is amazing. Some cranes. Oh, they're beautiful looking. This is just while we were walking through the line, seeing animals, it's awesome. While they eat here in the forest, they're browser animals, so they like wander around, feed off of trees, ambushes. You can also tell they're black rhinos because they're really small. They only weigh around 2,000 to about 3,000 pounds. Hippos are actually some of the largest and most dangerous animals in all of Africa, not because of what they eat. They are vegetarians. They're mostly dangerous because of how big they are. They can weigh around 5,500 pounds, but their bite is so strong that it can crush a crocodile in half. They can also crush an entire watermelon in their jaws as well. The pink backed pelicans who are on the island have a very obvious name. They have pink on their back, and they are in fact pelicans. Now they don't actually use their tail on the route, and they will swallow their fish whole. The reason the vultures are all here is because they've got a stigma you can for a fit. One win for everyone. And then on the left too is a basque of an Isle crocodile. On their left, they just don't do a lot for most of the day. It's because they're cold and blooded, like most very muscular animals, which means active at dawn and dusk. Just make sure we're not whistling at them, please. First, they're sleeping. That's not very nice. Second, they're some of the most successful and dangerous predators in Africa, even more than lions, cheetahs, and hyenas combined. 
And not only has it's a group, but because they chase their prey down till their prey falls over, they're around 90% successful. Hyenas, only about 50%. Cheetahs around 15% and lions around 7% successful. So wild dogs are up here. Everybody else is down here. Like it goes from 90 to 50. That's quite a difference there too. The Ancola cattle are here on the left along with the sable antelope. We're waiting on some animals in the room, but the sable antelope is the antelope one that's all the way on the side of the hill. They tend to be a little bit of an aggressive species. There's actually at least three of them up there. They're also extremely territorial animals, but they're also the emblem of the Harambe Wildlife Reserve because they are a fiercely protective animal too. And that's actually our goal here on the reserve. We are working very hard to protect the animals. They finish crossing. So they typically migrate to find water or to find food or to avoid predators. But as they have an abundance of water and rocks out on their right, along with some spring box and then the rest of the giraffes are coming up too. Spring box are the smaller tan and white antelopes there. Spring box get their name from their incredible ability to jump. They can jump about six feet straight up in the air, about 13 feet forward. When they do, it's called crunking. They typically crunk when they get scared or startled or sometimes like super duper duper excited about something. Adults can stand anywhere between about 18 and 20 feet tall, making them the tallest animal in the world. When they're tiny, adorable little babies are born, they're usually around four to six yes, feet tall. Baby. And then the antelopes at the top of the hill are called Patterson the Elan. Mandrels are the largest and most vibrantly colored monkeys in the world, with male mandrels weighing up to about 100 pounds or so, rather than over there. You can tell he's male just because he's chilling by himself. Once they reach the media, they actually only use ivory in art and in jewelry. Despite that, about 96 elephants are poached each and every single day. That's about one being poached every 15 minutes. If that rate continues, their entire species goes extinct within less than 10 years. Just for art. An extinction is forever. Look at the dinosaurs. They went extinct. There are not any more of them, and there will never be any more of them. That could happen to them in less than a decade. We don't want to scare it, because it did run away, and we don't want that. We want it to be as comfortable, I mean, as close to the truck as it wants to. Plus, the babies run, and moms are usually not too far behind them. And rhinos can run around 35 miles an hour, and my truck goes. So, we would lose in that situation. Look how cute we are. So white is not a reference to a white rhino's color in any way at all. White is actually a mistranslation of the Afrikaans word white. White is a reference to their mouth. It means wide. Because white rhinos have extremely wide, flat mouths. As they're grazer animals, which means that they eat the grass on the ground. Like a gigantic bastard. They're really curious about that rhino. So cheetahs are really tiny, only about 100 pounds or so, but that's because they're fast and they're curious about the rhino because he's in the barrel. Out of the ones who hunt the male lion, he just stays behind, watches over the pride, the territory, and any cubs that might be around. That is why there are two of them and only one of him. They find more success hunting together than they do it by themselves. The reason why he has a mate is because it's designed to protect his neck. Basically, he's fighting another lion. He's up behind those like, tall bushes at the bottom of the wiggly tree. So. Basically, when he's fighting another lion, it will bite into that mane of fur rather than into him. Their mane can be about 10 inches thick, weigh around 40 pounds or so. Yep, going in the morning was definitely a good idea. We got to see a ton of different animals out. We've done this plenty of times, and often we see a lot of the same animals, but that's okay because I think animals are cool, and we don't tend to go to the zoo, so this is a good opportunity to see them. And boy, that baby rhino was the star. <laughs> He was so adorably cute. A uh, big fan of the baby rhino. We finished the safari and just outside on the way back, there's a couple of gorillas. There's one there, one over there, hiding in the bushes. They're just up there munching. Wow, how majestic. We're doing the gorilla trail where you can see more animals up close and uh, there's an okapi up there we've never seen this one close before they say on the safari that they are not related to zebras even though they have stripes they're related to giraffe the only known relative of the giraffe 
Here's a colony of naked mole rats who regulate their body temperature by snuggling up like this. One down there by himself, running around. Wow. They also have a boa constrictor. Uh, let's see, there's its head. Follow its body. A bunch of different fish. That's a lot of fish. We don't usually eat here, but this is the menu for Flame Tree Barbecue. All of it looks pretty good. Well, the prices it's, are pretty reasonable. Yeah, it's reasonably priced for theme park food, but I bet baked macaroni and cheese with pulled pork is amazing. Pulled pork sandwich ribs and chicken yeah i mean this all looks pretty good maybe we'll eat here sometime josh and i are annual pass holders and occasionally we get some free swag like this magnet here uh, with donald on and i think donald was one of the last characters that we didn't have they have different ones to, for different times of the year and uh, a lot of people put these on their cars but then they get stolen from their cars so we put ours on our um refrigerator at home and so we have a whole bunch of these there and uh, yeah, it's awesome. So if you're an annual pass holder, you just go show your annual pass and your ID and they hand one to you. And both Josh and I got one because we're both annual pass holders. Another pro tip I wanted to show everyone was water. I mean, of course you're supposed to drink it. We've said that plenty of times. We forgot to bring our um, water bottle with us in the bag um, today, but that's fine. When we go back to the room, we'll get it. But if you are a pass holder or have any sort of discount, rather than buying your water from one of the vendors, like the food vendors that are around, buy it in a shop. The, some of the shops have coolers and they have water in them because then it's considered merchandise and you get percentage off. Like we got 30% off of this water and we would not have gotten it off of the, um, from a, one of the food vendors. And uh, we also got some trail mix because I love this stuff. It's a Chip and Dale trail mix and it's the perfect salty and sweet. Uh, so if you want to get a snack for your family to share, then get this and you know have a little bit of every so often it's very protein heavy so it can get you through your day this area of animal kingdom is called dino land it's chester and hester's dinorama so what it's supposed to emulate and you see there's a road here those old route 66 kind of uh cheesy um like as if they had found dinosaur bones and now you could stop as a roadside attraction. So this is supposed to be like a cheesy roadside attraction area. Uh, Primeval World is closed and I think it's closed permanently. They're gonna replace it with something else. And then they have a dino spin over here, which is really just a spinner ride. Uh, Triceratops spin based on Triceratops. And um, there's a boneyard over there. That's where we got the magnets where kids can go in and play. It's like a big playground. I'm not so certain it's open right now during the pandemic. I don't see any kids in it, but there's that. They have a restaurant over there called Restaurantosaurus. I love that name actually, Restaurantosaurus. Supposedly there's um, like professors and TAs here searching for dinosaur bones and this is like their base camp. And then down this way, we're not gonna go there, but down this way, there is a ride called Dinosaur. It uses the same track system as Indiana Jones in Disneyland. And oh my gosh, di the Disneyland Indiana Jones is so much better. There's been talk for years about changing Dino Land into an Indiana Jones themed land, and in which case they would retheme the dinosaur to Indiana Jones. It's the same vehicles and the, and the same track layout, uh, just not the same visuals. So they would have to change that up. But it's quaint in a way, but we don't spend a lot of time here. We're not really big on spinner rides. The Dino World one would make Josh sick. And the dinosaur one is very old and not that exciting. Um, we've been at Restaurant Tosaurus. It was fine. They have a toppings bar, so if you get a burger there, but not right now during the pandemic. And they have a bar there that we got a drink from earlier. But otherwise, it's just not that great of a theme. It feels sort of tacked on to us. So we would like a retheme of this area. Recently, they tried to liven it up by having Donald Duck. This is why we got the Donald Duck magnet here. Um, as if... You know, Donald realizes that 
birds are descended from dinosaurs, so he's decided that his ancestors are dinosaurs, so he's sort of come and taken over the land. And there were meet and greets with him and Launchpad McQuack and Scrooge McDuck. So it was a way to somewhat revitalize it. But again, you know, there's only so much you can do. But this is Dinoland in Animal Kingdom. We're heading into the Asia area of Animal Kingdom where Expedition Everest is. And uh, it seems like we're really far back. I'm gonna turn around and you can see all the people ahead of us. We're not in the regular line. So this seems really far back, but because of the expanded lines, it's not that far. Apparently from here, it's only a 10 or 15 minute wait, which is really not bad. But we saw this line at first, we're like, oh, that's gonna take forever. But no, it turns out 10 or 15 minutes is not actually forever. But I'll give you an update. Right now it's uh, pretty much 10 o'clock and I will tell you about when we get on. We're approaching the actual entrance of the ride. We still have a line to go through, but it is now about eight after. So it's only been eight minutes to take us to here, which doesn't actually start there. We still have to go around. So yeah, we might finish this in seven and the 15 minute uh, ride time is accurate, or at least pretty close. As you move through the queue, you're going through a Yeti museum. So there's some pretty cool stuff. Yeti foot. And then, oh, we're coming up on the place where they put us in a car. Yep, you it only took about 15 minutes, which is what they said. We did mobile order at Satuli Canteen for our lunch. We're really excited because we haven't eaten a Satuli in a while. We haven't, hadn't been coming to Animal Kingdom. And last time we were here, we weren't here long enough to get Satuli Canteen. In any case, uh, I forgot to order a soda like we would usually do. So we decided to get some uh, Starbucks. And uh, let's see, I got uh, just a black tea with some sweetener. Josh got the vanilla cold brew. How is that, Josh? It's okay. Just okay? Yeah, it's just okay. Not that good? It's okay. Okay, well, Josh thinks it's okay. And then we're just waiting for our food. Since we mobile ordered, we just got here. I clicked that we're here and they're making it now and I'll get a notification where to go pick it up as soon as it's ready. Good, because I'm looking forward to some Satuli Canteen food. Here are my goodies from Satuli Canteen. I got the chicken uh, protein with the noodles base and I got uh, green onion chimichurri, 
and I think they just call it charred onion something now, but it's a chimichurri. And I also got an extra side of the cream sauce. I like mixing them together. And Josh pretty much got the same thing. Sometimes he gets the hash, sometimes he gets the beans. He felt like the noodles today. And then of course we got the blueberry mousse because it's the only place in the park you can get it and it's delicious. And we're going to dig in on this. All of this together was about 22? No, it's gotta be more than that. I'll look at it. Oh wait, is it on there? It is not. It is not. Uh, I'll find out and let you know. So this is the train that you can take to Rafiki's Planet Watch, or Conservation Station at Rafiki, Rafiki's Planet Watch. So we took the train, this is the one we came in on, and we're going to go and check out the conservation. Josh and I did this one time before. Uh, they're really pushing that new movie. Uh, Rhea and the Last Dragon. All right, the giant thorny walking stick, we think it's right there at the top. We're pretty sure that that's him right there, like that is a leg sticking up there. So we're pretty sure that's him. There might be more in there. Like actually, yeah, there's one right here. Oh yeah. That one is one too. So that's that. And then the, oh, this is the one moving in Madagascar one. hissing cockroaches. No thanks. Yeah. Tarantula, you can <laughs> Not see Josh's that's favorite. The uh, this is the Brazilian salmon tarantula. Where is it, Josh? He's right at the base. You see his legs at the bottom. You can literally see it in here, right there. Oh. You can't see his oh. legs now? Yeah. He's hmm. not trying to hide. No, well, okay, I see. Yeah, he's right there. I was looking in the front of that, but there he is. I think the tarantulas did webs, but I guess this one does. And let's see. Scorpions. I don't see them in there. Nope. You can see the prickly stick right here. And giant prickly stick? And there's one that looks like the two. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a few of them in there, at least two. Right there. And there's one sort of hanging down there. And look at him. You see him? That's a great shot of him. He's right hanging down. Am I seeing him? Yep, right there. That's him. It's kind of cool, man. That camouflage. If I didn't know that was a creature, I wouldn't know. Beetles! Oh look, it's a beetle. That's his British accent. Bugs are cool. Bugs are cool. Oh, I don't want to own any, but I always thought bugs are cool. That keeps me out even further. Who needs that many legs? Millipedes are up there. Do you see one? No. Yeah. Not exactly, I'm okay too. I don't see it either. I mean, there's, there's a lot of places for a millipede legs. to hide in there, so... And... Centipede. <laughs> Central Dead American. leaf mantis. Oh man, it could be any of those leaf looking things. Actually, I think he's at the tip top over there. Oh yeah, well, yeah, right, right there. Hello, mantis. There's two of them in there. It's tough to be a bug. Black tree monitor lizard. Yeah. Ooh. He's very active. Hey, dude. Two toed and. There he is. Huh, look at him go. <laughs> and then, what were we looking at? Oh, yeah, there's that is an African bullfrog. There's a toad over there, and then there's uh, a two toed amphiuma. amphiuma. Oh, it's this thing here? Yeah, that's kind of eel looking? Thing? That's exactly what I referenced to as too. Two toed amphiuma. amphiuma. Yeah. That is a giant frog. I mean, I've seen frogs before, but. Never seen this giant. Hello, Mr. or Mrs. Frog. Yellow and blue poison dart frog. And there he is. He's very blue. That's the coolest one I've seen. Very easiest to see. Are there others? Yeah, there's one over there in the corner as well. Actually, a couple over there. Bring it, curl it. They also have an animation experience where they give you a piece of paper and a pencil and you follow along and try to draw something. I'm not sure what he's drawing here. Oh, we think it's Maria? Okay. Maybe that's why I don't know it yet. But uh, you can see all these people have their own papers and pencils and they're drawing. And they're just following along with what the person who is over there is drawing. 
Josh and I did something like this once in I, Disneyland, and his definitely looked better than mine. It was yeah, a goo. I think it was goofy. But he does have a his looked better than mine, but mine was still pretty good. So we're just gonna put a nice curved line. Wow. We asked one of the cast members, and they told us that what they're drawing here is That's a character kind of called Tuk Tuk from that new Raya and the Last like Dragon a, movie. A That's why we didn't recognize line. it because we've never seen this character before. By the way, I forgot to get back to this, but our lunch was $32, not $22. So $32 and some change for two bowls and the dessert that we split, which is really not that bad for the amount of food that you get uh, at the Satuli Canteen. So we highly recommend it. We've loved it every time we've gone. We are taking a look at Island Mercantile before we leave the park. So that's gonna do it for us from Animal Kingdom. Uh, we rode a few rides, had some lunch, uh, met up with a friend who lives out here in Florida. It's always nice to see her. Uh, shout out to Jessica, she's watching this. And uh, we're going to be heading off to Magic Kingdom now that we can park hop. We're hoping to get a room because we did that overnight flight, so Josh and I are going to be hurting, but it's uh, almost 1 o'clock, and you can park hop at 2, and if we end up park hopping, or excuse me, if we end up going back to our place, then that's gonna kill a couple of hours that we'd rather spend in Magic Kingdom since we're only going to each park once for sort of half a day on this trip. So it's okay that when you do an overnight flight, you run the risk of this happening on occasion. We've been lucky the last few trips that they've always had a room for us, just not this time. Hi, future Chris here on the last day of the trip. I wanted to show you a little bit of the resort that we're staying in. We finally got a room. Uh, it was after the check-in time. Um, it was about 5 p.m. by the time we got a room. We were in the park anyway, so it didn't ultimately matter, but it was past the check-in time. This is the resort where we are staying. It's uh, the Caribbean Beach Resort. Last time we stayed here, we stayed over here in this building, which was right next to that Disney Skyliner. And this time we're in, I think, that building which is right next to this Disney Skyliner. So one of the reasons we like to stay here is because there's multiple ways to get around, buses and the Skyliner. And right now when they can't fill up all the buses, the Skyliner is a great way to get to um, Hollywood Studios and Epcot without having to wait for buses. Because every, every moment we're waiting for a bus, I uh, feel like, excuse me, I feel like <laughs> we're wasting time on our vacation. Plus, I really like the way it looks. They have these different neighborhoods, as you saw on the map back there. And the neighborhoods are all around this lake here. You can see the Skyliner over there. And there's the Aruba where we stayed the first time. That uh, building over there is the Riviera Hotel. It's a DVC, Disney Vacation Club hotel. And we've seen it, it's beautiful, but I would not pay those kinds of prices. But otherwise, you come over here. Helicopter going over. There's a restaurant and bar here. Last time we were here, we actually had some uh, dinner and uh, drinks at the bar. It has really good food. And so you can see over there, that's the Aruba. And there's this island in the middle here where the bridge goes across. And uh, this is the food area I was talking about. The restaurant I don't think is fully open because of the pandemic. And uh, each neighborhood has its own pool, but there's also um, this pool over here, which is in the central area. Here's the pool, pretty nice, huh? I mean, it's not as good as the one at, um, Oh, where did we say last time? Yacht Club. But it's pretty cool, cool, pretty cool pool. There's a little bit of a slide. And uh, boy, it looks refreshing right now. It was 80 degrees, or excuse me, almost 90 degrees today. So that looks super refreshing. 